Jesus' name, welcome to Trinity Lutheran Church because today is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. It is, Pastor Eric, a beautiful day to come together. We are on Memorial Day weekend. A lot of activities that are taking place, graduation parties that are happening. We just celebrated graduation on Friday night, and so many things are taking place. And we acknowledge Memorial Day um, as a day for recognizing those who have died in battle, whether they have served our country and our nation's wars in the Army, Air Force, Navy, Coast Guard, or Marines. And so, yes, it's a day to spend with family, but it's also a reminder of those lives that have been lost. And so we want to lift up family, friends, and anyone with those types of connection in prayer on this day coming tomorrow, because sometimes it's difficult for mm -hmm. people to remember is. everyone all at once that they may have lost, that they served alongside. Exactly. As we said, it's, it's a busy time of the year, and of course we move into the summer months. It's kind of the kickoff of the summer, and so it is the same for the church. We are kicking off our first Wednesday event, which will be June 7th, and it'll be a pickleball games up at the pickleball courts up by the high school football field, and uh, we will have a devotion and a light lunch and an opportunity to play pickleball together. And if you haven't played pickleball and you'd like to learn, come on out that evening at 6.30 and uh, join us and uh, have some fun as we come together and have fellowship and at that place and opportunity so and we usually crown the victors there's <laughs> a team that wins gets a jar of pickles um, has been um. the tradition here um, but know that it's an event for all ages so whether you play or just grab a lawn chair and cheer on those who do it's a lot of fun and we hope that you're able to come out for that event Exactly. And so with that, my friends, let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship. you now into our time of confession and forgiveness. God, we hear your invitation to us. Come to me, you who are weary and heavy burdened. I will give you rest. We acknowledge our soul's need for rest and quiet nourishment. We lay down our burdens. We acknowledge our soul's need of connection with you. 
We confess our tendency to overlook rest as a necessary part of soul and self-care. We confess our pride in thinking that our work is so important that we may not set it down. We confess our readiness to believe that what we do determines our worth. We confess our obsession with productivity, results, measurable progress. We confess our tendency to forget that it is in you that we live and move and have our being and that your love is better than life. We ask now for body, mind, spirit, and whole person nourishment. For rest and resurrection, for new life, for healing and consolation of our souls. We ask for help in managing our time and activities so that our infillings keep up with our outpourings. Where we have overspent ourselves, refresh us. Where we have misplaced our priorities, rearrange us. Where we have said yes when we should have said no, remind us. We thank you for meaningful work, for blessings and burdens. We thank you for rest. May we become present to our great need for daily bread, the presence of Christ in our lives. Amen. Amen. Hear the good news, the good news of peace and salvation. God forgives us all our sins, not through our own works, but through Jesus Christ risen from the dead. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, good morning, kids. As I greet you with this, Hoskin Gorda. That's right. Do you understand what I'm saying to I you? believe it means, how are you? Ah, yes. My only Norwegian that I know is Hoskin Gorda and is, how are you? And it's a different language. Some of you, and I don't know if you know any other languages, Pastor Rick, do you? I'm familiar with other languages, but nothing that I'm fully fluent in. Oh, okay. So, but there's a connection, and we recognize that languages help us embrace the story of Pentecost, how people in their own language were spoken to through the Holy Spirit and how that influenced them. So we invite you to take part and listen to this story. Exactly. It's called the Holy Spirit. Jesus' disciples were celebrating a festival called Pentecost when suddenly a strong wind blew through the house. Everyone's hair lifted up and there was an amazing noise. They looked at each other. It looked like each disciple had a flame of fire touching him. But no one was burned. The Holy Spirit had come just as Jesus promised. The disciples began to speak in different languages, languages they'd never learned. Stranger yet, they could understand each other. Peter stood up. I want to tell you about Jesus. He reminded everyone what Jesus taught them. He told them how Jesus died and lives, lives again. It's time for us to begin a new life with God's Spirit guiding us. Peter said the disciples were excited to live differently, guided by God's Spirit. This was the very beginning of the Christian church. So we would acknowledge this idea that a spirit-filled ministry, a spirit-filled church, and how wonderful it is, it doesn't matter who you are or what language you speak, but the good news of Jesus is for all of us to hear and to be inspired by, and we can hold on to this one promise that Jesus gave each and every one of us, that we will be empowered by the Holy Spirit with gifts to share with others in need. Wow. I can about imagine that day, what it was like when the Holy Spirit became upon each individual, each of the disciples, and pretty soon they're speaking in a different language. It can be kind of a scary thing. I've been at a place where I didn't know the language, and I was worried that I would, would I be able to communicate, and would they be able to understand me, and would I be able to understand them? And so it is kind of a, a scary thing. But yet it's a beautiful thing when we have all these different languages that we're able to share God's story, God's love, the gospel to everyone and so that everyone can hear. And so it is a beautiful thing. And we can be confident because we know the Holy Spirit is guiding and directing us when we share the good news of Jesus, either with our family, our siblings, our aunts, our uncles, or anyone in this community or anywhere out in the world. 
We can be confident that the Holy Spirit is right alongside us, helping guide and direct us to do so. Exactly. So kids, when you hear a different language, celebrate that language. Even if you don't understand it, celebrate it knowing that the Holy Spirit is working in and through each and every one of the languages that he has blessed us with. Let us pray. Dear God, thank you for sending the Holy Spirit upon us. Thank you for giving us the different languages. Thank you for giving each of us the different talents, the different abilities that we can share. Be with us as we go out to share the good news to all that hear. And all God's children said, Amen. Amen. Our first reading for this Sunday of Pentecost is coming from Acts. Acts 2, verses 1 through 21. When the day of Pentecost had come, the apostles were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven, there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind. And it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in their own languages as the Spirit gave them the ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at the sound, the crowd gathered and were bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, Pontus, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygi, and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya, belonging to Cyrene, and the visitors of Rome, both Jews and the proselytes, Cretans, and Arabs, in their own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But the others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose. For it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be God declares that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy and your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit and they shall prophesy and I will show portents in the heavens above and signs on the earth below Blood and fire, smoke ye mists. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Our second reading is coming from 1 Corinthians 12, 3 through 13. No one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And the varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one who is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by the one Spirit, to another 
the working of miracles, to another the prophecy, to another the discernment of spirits, to another various kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. All these are activated by the one and the same Spirit who allots to each one individually just as the Spirit chooses. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all members of the body, though many are one body, so it is with Christ. For in one spirit, we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made the drink of one spirit. This is the word of the Lord. Singing a song of celebration, lift up a shout of praise, for the bridegroom will come, the glorious one. And oh, we will look on his face, we'll go to a much better place. So dance with all your might, lift up your hands and clap for joy, the time's drawing near, when he will Joy. 
Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace and peace to you from our Lord Jesus Christ. For many years, I remember celebrating Pentecost during Sunday morning worship, typically in the month of May or June, wherever it fell approximately 50 days after Easter. And I remember that it was Pentecost because as I would round the corner into the sanctuary, I would see some different symbols inside of our congregation. For example, we would have our altar and our pulpit adorned in the color red. Oftentimes, there'd be a banner, specifically like the one in Trinity, that says, Come Holy Spirit, along the side wall. Sometimes people would wear red shirts or red dresses. And I have even seen a time or two of the color red in people's socks. And this color red was a reminder that it was Pentecost, and we were celebrating coming of the Holy Spirit. Another thing I remembered on that Pentecost Sunday would be how our readings from Scripture would highlight how Jesus promised that we would receive the Holy Spirit as an advocate time and again. And lastly, often a reading from the Apostle Paul in his letter to the Corinthians would state that people would receive Holy Spirit gifts for the benefit of others in the proclamation of the good news of Jesus' life, death, and resurrection. Those were three common themes that would come each year as we celebrated Pentecost. But this amazing story for me, for a long time, remained just that, a story. It wasn't until I discovered over time that this story was relevant and applicable to my life and the life of others that then I appreciated the Holy Spirit being promised as an advocate recognizing that the Holy Spirit was alongside me, guiding and directing me towards the love of Jesus, Jesus' forgiveness through my faith in Him, Jesus' faithfulness to me, expressing God's grace and opportunity to live in heaven for eternity. Additionally, I recognize that I too received spiritual gifts just like you. It wasn't just the story of someone else in some other time receiving spiritual gifts, but instead it was not only them, but us included in this reality. As I received spiritual gifts, you received spiritual gifts for the benefit of others and proclaiming the good news of Jesus. And that was comforting when Pentecost came to life and I could recognize how applicable it is to my life each and every day. As God has given each Christian two vitally important gifts. The first is the gift of faith in Jesus Christ. And the second is the gift of one or more abilities called spiritual gifts, which are to be used for the purpose of unifying the body of Christ, growing the kingdom of God, love for one another, and conducting acts of service for others in need. These spiritual gifts are unique and clearly a part of the kingdom of God because we don't get to choose which ones 
we receive. It's not like we wait in line and get up to the teller and say, I'd like the spiritual gift of faith, proclamation, and hospitality. That's not how it works. The Holy Spirit provides us with these gifts. We get what we get, and we're absolutely equipped to then go out and share the good news of Jesus with others in very effective ways. These gifts are meant to bring glory to God, and they are focused on serving the needs of others. These are not inward gifts, but outward gifts that are meant to be shared with our community and world instead. With those details in mind, the following example of Holy Spirit gifts being put into action include the following at Trinity, which includes our outdoor worship stage, which you may be familiar with if you worship with us during the summer. Approximately over two years ago, that outdoor worship stage didn't exist in its current configuration and positioning in the back of our property. Over two years ago, the Holy Spiritual gift of leadership was beginning to unfold as Alan and I walked to the doors by our ramp in the back of our church. It was in the middle of the winter, windy and snowy as I can remember, and the parking lot was full of snow and ice with this big snow pile in the back. I believe it was in January, if I'm correct. And there was a Holy Spirit moment where the Holy Spirit was a part of this conversation between Alan and I as we asked one another, what if there was a worship stage out back that we could use in the wintertime where people could either park in their vehicles or sit in chairs that were either set up or they brought themselves on even asphalt or in the grass right off the parking lot? And then we could create this worship space that would be amazing to hear music and proclamation of the good news of Jesus. From there, this vision started to take shape, which I truly believe was Holy Spirit filled. As we then experienced the gift of artistry as someone came to design the outdoor worship stage using concrete as the base and the sides and the back, and then wood as the outer perimeter that looks beautiful when it was stained in a tan color. And the Holy Spirit gift of skilled craft came into play as we had electricians from the congregation take power from the church and put it underneath the road and alongside the parking lot along the wood line. Unfortunately, they caught some poison ivy in the, during this process, but they brought power to the garage and upgraded that and brought power to this outdoor worship stage and upgraded that. And that is when things really started to take motion because we had other people sharing the Holy Spiritual gifts of skilled craft as they laid the concrete and built the wood and stained it. And then we got to experience Holy Spiritual gifts of service as we had volunteers that painted that tan stain on the outside and inside and on the cross area. Many other ways that brought this stage to life. Other spiritual gifts of skill, craft, and service included setting up the landscape, which took trees that were in the way, but not many of them. They took out rocks that were just causing an even slope to be impossible to form. So they took that out of the way, and this has this nice gentle slope so that people can sit and walk to the stage back and forth. And now it looks like the worship stage has always been there. And it's not just coming on two years old, but it's always been a part of who we are as we worship here at Trinity because of people sharing their spiritual gifts of service and faith and skilled craft. Spiritual gift of faith came into play as people recognized that there was a vision that was seeking after God's will and glorifying God and serving the needs of others and trusting that we had the spiritual gifts necessary to make this happen. 
and that we would be able to proclaim the good news of Jesus in doing so and trusting that we were heading in the right direction. Spiritual gift of giving came to play as that helped us finance the resources and some of the labor. It's a reminder to me that all of these spiritual gifts together is what brought that outdoor worship stage to life. The last two gifts that we have been able to enjoy because of the outdoor worship stage is the gift of music through song and instruments, the gift of proclamation as we hear people invited in Jesus' name to worship in that this always consistent good morning Pelican Rapids that Alan would share. It's a wonderful thing took place over these last two years. And without everyone sharing their spiritual gifts, there would be no outdoor worship stage that would bring glory to God outdoors amongst creation in the way we will be worshiping this summer starting next Sunday, the first Sunday in June. And this outdoor worship stage serves as a reminder of how we are more effective in serving in ways in which the Holy Spirit has gifted us Versus trying to force oneself to serve in ways we are not gifted. As we do not choose which gifts we receive from the Holy Spirit. A good example of serving where we are not gifted by the Holy Spirit can include using the outdoor worship stage as an example. For example, the spiritual gift of music. If I was trying to live into that gift instead of the gift of proclamation which I have been given, that would include me not preaching, but instead leading the congregation in singing and playing a guitar, which is not the gift that the Holy Spirit has given me. And this idea of the outdoor worship stage and worshiping outside in creation would begin to fall apart real fast if that's the route we went. But for example, another way would be if we mismatch gifts of the Holy Spirit gift of artistry which isn't a gift that Alan has because he has the gift of proclamation of faith to lead worship. But let's say that he went after serving this gift in his own selfish way, saying, all I want to do is design the stage and that is it. Well, that wouldn't be helpful if he was off to the sidelines. He, that wouldn't serve others in need and bring glory to God. If we're mismatching these gifts and seeking after our own will that didn't make sense. Holy Spirit of gift of service, for example, those who stain the wood would lay concrete instead. That wouldn't be helpful. I know the people that have stained the wood, and I know the people that lay the concrete. If they were to reverse roles, we would not have an outdoor worship stage. Or if we were to reverse the roles of those who wired the stage with electricity, they would share their Holy Spiritual gifts of running the soundboard instead. So we would switch those who run the soundboard with those who ran all the electricity. With these mismatched of gifts and not seeking after God's will, which they clearly have been given, again, we wouldn't have an outdoor worship stage or an outdoor worship stage powered with electricity or the ability to have sound in a way that people could hear. No ifs, ands, or buts. And lastly, just a reminder By this funny example, we're reminded of how the Holy Spirit gifts we receive are for pursuing God's will. So we're reminded that we don't choose the gifts we are given, but when we live into these gifts, we're able to best and most effectively live into God's will, unify the church, grow the kingdom of God, share our love for one another, and serve others in need Instead, so my friends in Christ, don't let the story of Pentecost just be a story you hear once a year. And instead, I encourage the story of Pentecost to be a daily reminder for you that just as Jesus promised, the Holy Spirit is your advocate. The Holy Spirit has bestowed upon each and every one of you spiritual gifts that are not meant for your own selfish benefit but for the benefit of others and bringing glory to God and being equipped to serve the needs of others. 
Amen. With the whole church, let us confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. United in the hope and joy of the resurrection, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Passionate God, you sent your spirit through the gifts of fire, wind, and word. As you equip the disciples for their work, equip us to bring the good news to all those who long for you. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Restoring God, wind and flames bring life and destruction throughout the world. We pray for protection of the lands facing destructive fires, for forestries, managers, and firefighters. Renew the face of this earth. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Merciful God, you anoint us with your spirit. Bless us, nurses, doctors, midwives, chaplains, counselors, hospice workers, as they care for those in need. We pray this day for Artis Johnson, Charles Nettisted, Megan Harthoon, Ashley Harthoon, Kathleen Bruns Doppler, 
Ardeen Erickson, Jason Johnson, Gina Erickson, Larry Hayden, Carol Zielinski, and all others whom we left before you. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Generous God, you impart a variety of gifts. Set aflame the desire to learn from one another, especially those who differ from us. Make your presence known through missionaries, peace workers, and through the outreach ministries of our synod and of our community. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Living God, we give thanks for those who have died to new life in you. We observe Memorial Day. We remember those who died in military service. Comfort all who mourn and usher in a world where war is no more. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Rejoicing in the victory of Christ's resurrection, we lift our prayers and praise to you, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. At this time, we give thanks for the offering we receive to proclaim Christ through word and deed here in Pelican Rapids, Minnesota, our state, country, and beyond. Let us pray. Merciful God, we, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Well, my friends, as we come to the close of this service, as we go out into this day and into the week before us, go with this blessing. May the road rise up to meet you. May the wind be always at your backs. May the sun shine warm upon your faces and the rains fall gentle upon your fields. And until we meet again, may God hold you in the palm of his hand. Amen. This is my song, O God of all the nations, a song of peace for lands of far and This 
is my prayer, O God of all earth's kingdoms, your kingdom come, on earth your will be done. O God, be lifted up till all shall serve you. As we go forth in this week, I invite all of us to embrace the Holy Spirit gifts we have each been given for the common good and go out and reflect on what they are and how they can help someone else. Exactly. With that being said, go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. God. Have a blessed Sunday, everyone. See you next week. God bless. Mm